This is the fastest SSD on the planet right now, at least according to WD and SanDisk. And we are about to find out if we can actually get the maximum performance out of this SSD and if it's worth buying one of these for your setup. On the outside, it's a regular M.2 SSD. On the back, it has nothing at all. Only on the top, it has a controller, the chips and the memory. Installation wise, it's really simple. It's a M.2 PCIe Generation 5. So any computer with PCIe Generation 2 or above will be able to take one of these. Of course, to take full advantage of it, we will need a computer with PCIe Generation 5, which is the case of this Asus ROG Strix G16 from 2025, which is really easy to upgrade. We just need to press this button right over here. It will open the bottom cover and we will find two M.2 SSD slots, which are awesome. I can upgrade the original SSD or I can place this one as a second SSD. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper. But let's take a look at some benchmarks and also at some real tasks like opening our computer just pressing the button then starting it up to see if we can find a difference between the SSD that comes with this machine which is a 6000 megabytes per second SSD and and this one right over here which does 14,900 megabytes per second. Now the first test that I did was on Crystal Disk Mark and the original SSD just out of curiosity is also a WD. It's an SN5000S and I was able to achieve 6,200 megabytes per second. On a WD Black I was able to achieve only, only 13,700 megabytes per second, which is crazy speeds, but it's not the 14,900 megabytes per second. So what I'm going to do as soon as I can is I'm going to test out this SSD on another motherboard so that I can check out if the limitation is on the ASUS uh, laptop side or if it's on the SSD. The next test that I did was on Blackmagic Disk Speed. The original SSD was able to achieve only 4,700 megabytes per second, which is insane speed. And the WD Black, I was able to achieve only 9,800 megabytes per second. But while I was testing the temperature, I actually could achieve a little bit more, 10,500 megabytes per second, but not the same that we did with Crystal Disk. Next test that I did was on 3D Mark the storage benchmark, which simulates game launches, recording gameplay, installation, and so on. And the original SSD was able to achieve 2,850, while the WD Black was able to achieve 4,652, which is not the double, but it's not far from it. And this is great to see even on benchmarks. But let's go and fire up our laptop and see how many seconds we will be able to boot this particular laptop. And let's just have in mind that depending on the computer that we have and the components, uh, laptops and desktops can take longer. So I did exactly the same test with the both SSDs. The original SSD took 18 seconds and 31 since I pressed the on button until it reached the Windows screen. On the WD Black, before I tell you the number, let me know down below in the comment section right now, if you can, of course, and thanks for that. What's the duration that you think? About 10 seconds, 5 seconds, or very close to the original SSD? But before I give you the answer, thanks for that. Now, I was able to achieve, as you can see, 17 seconds and 70. Two. So, we will not get the double of the speed in certain tasks, and this is one of them. When I boot a computer, I'm only gaining one second in this particular 
task. And one of the most demanding apps that we will find on any computer are games. Regardless if we play games or not, I did try Forza Horizon 5 since I do initiate the app until it reaches the initial screen. The original SSD was able to achieve that in 1 minute and 17 seconds, while the WD Black was able to achieve the same task in 49 seconds, which is cool. And here we can see a big difference. We are talking about 20 something seconds of difference. So if we multiply this by many times that we do that with our computer with plenty of tasks, then we will get some return better than the one second return that we got on opening starting our computer with one ssd or the other i also did another test which was the temperature which is something that people is concerned on ssds of generation 5 and what i was able to watch was that the maximum temperature during 20 minutes of continuous read and write 5 gigabit files was about 53 degrees celsius so it's well below the 85 degrees celsius limit on this ssd and by the way, we are in summer. I live in Portugal, Algarve, really, really warm. Here on the office at this moment, 26, 27 degrees Celsius, which is more or less on that line where sometimes I need to think if I'm going to turn the AC on or not. But to mention that it's not 10 degrees like in the winter, for example, or 15, that probably would lower down a few degrees, three or four degrees. But I'm really comfortable with these temperatures. I've been using SSDs all my life. I've been measuring a lot of them and some of them achieve higher temperatures and they are not from generation five. So here, just fine. So the question is, is it worth it to get one of these or not? And in my opinion, the answer has to be a yes or a no, depending on my situation. For example, with this Asus ROG G16 from 2025, which has the WDSN5000S, which is from generation 4, achieves 6000 megabytes per second. 2 terabytes on this machine. If you ask me, should I upgrade with 2 terabytes of a 14,900 megabytes SSD? My answer has to be no, it doesn't make sense. What if I keep my original one and I want to add a second SSD to this laptop? Should I get one SN5000 or should I get one SN810? Then my answer has to be get the best that you can can and probably you will not be able to take full advantage of this ssd just yet in this particular machine because even if i connect something via thunderbolt 5 so i will get about 8000 megabytes per second if i've got a thunderbolt 5 enclosure because i will be limited by the connection if i'm transferring files from this ssd to the original ssd i will be limited to the 6000 megabytes per second or so but regardless that i would say yes if i can and of course, because I will be able to have the best technology at this moment. And if I'm buying one, then why not have the best that I can? On the other hand, if you have a computer with a older motherboard and you have an SSD that goes up to 500 megabytes per second or 1000 megabytes per second, and let's say that your motherboard is from generation three, PCIe generation three, then I would say yes, although I will not be able to achieve more than three or four thousand megabytes per second i know that in a couple of years when i'm able to update my old system i will no longer need to update the ssd because it's the fastest that this model will be able to achieve the maximum performance on the other hand if you are with the same motherboard generation 3 and you want to keep your computer for more 10 years which i don't see but it's possible then i would say no don't bother buying one of these. There are SSDs that are a lot cheaper. Get one that will reach up to 2000 or 3000 megabytes per second and you will be a lot happier than with your 500 megabytes per second that you are achieving right now. So it's not a yes or no, it is a depends on the situation that we are. But if you have the budget and you enjoy to have the latest technology on one of your machines, then in my opinion, it's a really cool components to have on any desktop or laptop computer. That being said, hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.